Aza also has a project that is using AI to translate animal communication uh, called the Earth Species Project. Yeah. I was just reading something about whales yesterday. Mm -hmm. Is that re regarding that? Yeah, we, I mean, we work across a number of different species, dolphins, whales, orangutans, crows. And uh, I think the reason why Tristan is bringing it up is because we're like this conversation, we're just going to sort of dive into like, which way is AI taking us as a species, as a civilization? Um, and it can be easy to hear just critiques as coming from critics, but we've both been builders and I've been working on AI uh, since, you know, really thinking about it since 2013, but like building since 2017. Mm. So this thing that I was reading about with whales, that there's mm. some new scientific breakthrough mm -hmm. where they're understanding patterns in the whale's language. Mm -hmm. And what they were saying was the next step would be to have AI work on this and try to break it down and break it down into pronouns, nouns, verbs, or whatever they are using mm -hmm. and s decipher some sort of language out of it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And what most people don't realize is the amount that we actually already know. So dolphins, for instance, have names that they call each other by. Wow. Parrots, turns out, also have names that they're, like the mother will like whisper in each different child's ear and like teach them their name to go back and forth until the child gets it. Oh. Um, one of my favorite examples is actually off the coast of Norway every year. There's a group of false killer whales that speak one way and a group of dolphins that speak another way. And they come together in a super pod and hunt. And when they do, they speak a third different thing. Whoa. Yeah, the so whales they, and the dolphins. The whales and the dolphins. So they have a kind of like interlingua or lingua franca. Uh, what is a false killer whale? It, it's a sort of a, a messed up name, but it's just, <laughs> it, it's a species related to killer whales. They look sort of like killer whales, but a little different. So it's like a, in the dolphin yeah. genus. Yeah, oh, exactly. Wow. These guys. Okay, I've seen those it's Like before. a fool's gold type thing. Like mm -hmm. it looks like gold, but it's. God, they're yeah. cool looking. Yeah. Wow. How cool are they? Mm -hmm. God, look at that thing. That's amazing. <laughs> and so they hunt together and use a third language. Yeah, they speak a, a third different way. Is it limited? Oh, well, here's the thing. Like, we, we, we just... We don't know? We don't know yet. No. Did you ever read any of Lily's work, John Lilly? Mm -hmm. He was the wildest one. Yeah. Right? That, that guy was convinced that he could take acid and use a sensory deprivation tank to communicate with dolphins. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. 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 He was out there. Yeah, he had some really good <clears throat> early work, and then he sort of like... Went down the acid route. Well, yeah, he went down the ketamine route, too. Mm -hmm. Well, his thing was the sensory deprivation tank. Uh -huh. you know, that was his invention. And he he did it specifically. Oh, to he try. invented the yes. sensory deprivation tank. We well, had a bunch of different models. The one that we use now, <clears throat> the one that we have out here, is just um, a thousand pounds of Epsom salts into 94-degree mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. And you float in it. And it's, you know, and you close the door. Total silence, total darkness. His original one was like a scuba helmet. And you were just kind of suspended by straps. Mm and you were just in water and he had it so he could defecate and urinate and he had like like a diaper system or some sort oh. of a pipe connected to him so he would stay in there for days yeah. Well, yeah, he was out of his mind well he sort of set back like the study yeah. of animal communication mm -hmm. well the problem was the masturbating the dolphins mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, <laughs> but so what happened was there was a female researcher and she lived in a house and the house was uh, like three feet submerged of water. And so she lived with this dolphin. But the only way to get the dolphin to try to communicate with her is the dolphin was always aroused. Yeah. So she had to manually take care of the dolphin and then the dolphin would participate. But until that, the dolphin was only interested in sex. Yep. And so they found out about that, and you know the Puritans and the scientific community decided that that was a no-no. You cannot do that. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. She probably, she probably she shouldn't have told anybody. Mm. Mm. I mean, I guess this is like, this is the '60s, right? Was it? I yeah, think. I think that's right. So I don't remember sexual that revolution. Right. People oh, like there you go. Yeah. a little bit more open to this idea mm -hmm. of jerking off a dolphin <laughs> this is uh, definitely not the direction <laughs> that i thought it was gonna that, go yeah you well, know, welcome to the talking show talking about ai risk and uh, <laughs> will, uh, you know talking about i'll give you though my my one other like my most favorite study um which is a 1994 university of hawaii study which they taught dolphins two gestures and the first gesture was do something you've never done before mm. innovate and what's crazy is that the dolphins like can understand that very abstract topic they'll remember everything they've done before um 
And then they'll understand the concept of negation, not one of those things. And then they will invent some new thing they've never done before. So that's already cool enough. But then they'll say to two dolphins, they'll teach them the gestures, do something together. And they'll say to the two dolphins, do something you've never done before together. And they go down and exchange sonic information. And they come up and they do the same new trick that they have never done before at the same time. They're coordinating. <laughs> exactly. I like wow. that. I like that bridge. So their language is so complex that it actually can encompass describing movements to each other. That's what it, it's what it appears. Like it doesn't, of course, prove representational language, but it certainly, for me, puts the like Occam's razor or like on on the other foot. Like it yes. seems like there's really something there, there, and that's what the project I work on, Earth Species, is about. Because you know, there's one way of diagnosing like like all of the biggest problems that humanity faces, whether it's like. Uh, climate or whether it's opioid epidemic or loneliness it's because there's a, a we're, we're doing narrow optimization at the expense of the whole 